Hi, I'm Joel. I'm a photographer and a filmmaker. And in this video, we're going to talk about my stock photography journey after one year. So I've been a photographer for about 20 years now. Most of my photography has been in portraits, weddings, events, as well as a little bit of travel photography as I've gone on adventures or even uh, behind the scenes on uh, film projects that I've produced. So a little over a year ago, I finally decided to start kind of dabbling with stock photography. Uh, the main idea was I was just looking at creating a couple different passive income streams or something close to passive income streams. Uh, and so I finally started looking into it. I've never really followed stock photography much. Uh, I've had teachers in the past that uh, I know that did a lot of stock photography. And this is like, you know, back in the 80s and 90s when, you know, you make a lot of, you could make a pretty decent income on it. Um, so, but I didn't really know much about the industry now or even more specific micro stock photography. So I didn't even know where to begin. So a lot of this last year, a little over a year and a half has been tons of learning, trying to figure out even just where to start and, you know, kind of how the whole thing works. So where am I at in my stock photography? So right now we're looking at about a little, almost a year and a half after I started doing it. My first uploads were in June of 2020 and my first stock agencies that I became contributed to were Shutterstock and 2020. Both of these stock agencies have slightly different revenue models. Uh, Shutterstock is traditional micro stock where you have, uh, you know, you pay a price either through their subscription service or per image download. And, you know, I make a percentage or a commission royalty, whatever you want to call it, uh, based on that sale. Whereas 2020 is more of a revenue share model. All of the subscribers that go into the sign up for, in this case, Envato. So half of their uh, subscription fees go into a pot. And then based on the number of downloads that each upload or contributor has, uh, you get like a piece of that based on how much they spend or essentially, or, you know, how many things that they download. Um, so they're a little bit different. Um, but I wanted to do that because I was just curious, like how these models worked and what kind of a difference they would be. But like most people, I started by essentially just mining my hard drives, just went through basically the last 10 years of images that I had on my drives and just looked for anything that I'd actually already edited since there was a lot of stuff that I hadn't even started editing at all because, uh, well, you know, my regular work, my, my paying clients and my film work kind of got in the way a lot of times. So, uh, decided to start with what was easy. So at my one year mark, which would have been June of 2021, I had uploaded at least a handful of images to nine different photography agencies. So, um, I had Shutterstock 2020, I am Deposit Photo, Alamy, Pond5, 123RF, Adobe Stock, and also Canva. Now, like I mentioned before, I only uploaded to Shutterstock and 2020 for the first six months. So the rest of them I didn't even start becoming a contributor to or doing any uploads until at least the beginning of 2021. At, the, at my one year mark, I had about 600 images on IM, which is probably like the most number of accepted images I had on their marketplace. And the least number would have been Canva with around 62 images. But overall, I think I had, if you average it across all of them, I was sitting around 350 image, images on average um, across all agencies um, at my one year mark. So looking back over the last year, um, there's definitely a number of obstacles that I had to overcome or actually honestly still overcoming. Um, a few of those were first off trying to figure out um, like what makes a good stock photo that the agencies will accept. And of course, beyond that, what the buyers are actually looking for. Um, with that, there's also different quality levels that each of the different agencies will accept. Some of them are super hypercritical, like Shutterstock, where 
they will flag your image for this the tiniest thing uh, if it's slightly too grainy or if it sees some kind of artifacts which you can't see it'll flag it um, lots of technical things if it's the framing isn't just right like artistic images don't seem to work really well there like if i like to frame like to the left or to the right and um when you do that it a lot of those images that i've uploaded on shutterstock get flagged as like out of focus or some other excuse you know like centered or focus of image not acceptable i can't remember the terms but you get the idea um some can be very critical, some are very easy to upload to. They'll take pretty much anything. Additionally, like learning just how to upload your images is a big one. Uh, just the individual uh, ways that each of the different agencies require you to upload their images, the way they have you keyword and all that stuff is a little bit different across all of them. Plus, like learning how to actually batch your images in a way so that you've got a bunch of images that are fairly similar like learning how to divide those up across several batches so that they don't get flagged. Because a lot of times if you've got like 15 images that are different enough that a buyer would want those small nuances, sometimes the 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 AI or whoever's accepting the images will, if they see a whole bunch in a row that are like too close together, they might start uh, rejecting some of those for being too close, too similar. Also learning how to write descriptions and keywording is huge and it's also super boring or at least to me it is it takes a lot of time to basically upload and keyword each image to each agency like i mentioned before um through, through each of their different portals so um which is all something you do after of course you've already edited your images in lightroom or, or whatever your photo editing software is so it can become quite a big time suck for that. Another obstacle is you don't get immediate feedback. Um, sometimes it can take agencies weeks or even up to months, in my case, I've had for a few agencies at least, um, to approve or even decline your images. And after that, you still it could even take as long or longer before you even get your first sale. So it's kind of hard to figure out like what images you should be you know, putting out there and uploading when you're not seeing what stuff is selling. So that can be, that's another obstacle to learn. But ultimately, I think the biggest one to learn is actually trying to figure out how to balance your time and seeing your time that you invest in editing and everything and uploading that whole thing, that whole amount of time that you spend, ultimately balancing your time and seeing that as an investment versus the revenue that you're earning, both in the short term as well as potentially in the long term. Obviously, you want to keep everything as little time as possible in in order to get, you know, the best bang for your buck, you know, years down the road. So these are all things that I am still learning and trying to improve upon. Um, overall, I think learning how to streamline my process and my workflow, um, just like for you as well, learning how to streamline your process and your workflow um, can help create it as get it as closely to passive as possible so that you're putting the least amount of time and effort into it on the front end so that you can actually, you know, have a little better returns, um, whether it be in the short term or even the long term. So additionally, I'm also looking at other ways that I can further monetize the images that I create uh, through other avenues, like perhaps like print sales. And also to branch out into other stock things like stock video sales as well. So if these are all things that you're interested in, which I imagine if you're still watching this, you probably are, then uh, be sure to follow along, subscribe. Uh, you can also check out, follow me on my socials if you want, they're all in the description down below. Plan on definitely sharing more, uh, more content about photography, both stock photography, stock videography, and um, sharing some of the things that I'm learning along the way, as well as some income reports to kind of give you an idea of at least how some of my stuff is doing across the different agencies and stuff. So I think that can all be helpful. And if you've got any questions or comments, uh, definitely leave them below, I'll try to answer them. And uh, other than that, thanks for watching and cheers.
Thanks for watching. Begin, be gear sure to. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And tell, oh my God.